Hi everyone, it's Kent Barber here from Game Logic Design. Today I'm going to take you through the work I've been doing for loading in the Moana Island scene that you can get from Disney Animation. It's a big, huge data set uh, from the island from uh, the Moana movie. If you want this information, this files, you can come up to technologydisneyanimation.com slash island scene. And down here you'll see two data sets. The base one and the animation one is the one that you will be needing. At the moment I'm just using the base. Now this is 93 gigabytes worth of data when it's unpacked. It's a huge amount of data to work with. A lot of OBJs, um, textures and ptext format and JSON files describing the structure of the scene. So if you download this you'll be able to use it with the um, plugin I'm about to show and I'll be giving this plugin away for free to allow people to experiment in Cinema 4D with this same data set. So let's just jump into R20 here. And we come up to the plugins. I'm going to have a dialogue called probably Moana Island Scene. So it's called Moana Island Scene Viewer. And this is going to be loading in a hard coded path uh, directly on your hard drive somewhere. Uh, so you'll be setting it in the preferences somewhere essentially. And then it will load in the data from the extracted base file that I just showed you. And uh, so let's just jump right in. So this file has a whole pile of what they call elements, it also has cameras, which we'll get to in a second. So the idea of this is this dialogue is it's just going to load in the data that's required uh, when you want to use it. So if you don't need anything, then it won't be loaded into memory. So let's just start with the two big things, um, a mountain. So we load in the mountain and we can rotate around. We can see this mountain here. And then we've got another data set, um, a, a bigger mountain behind that, mountain B. You can load that in as well. And you got Mountain B in behind there as well. And this is from, you know, just from the movie. Now, if you don't want to use Mountain B in your scene at the moment, you just click that and it's deleted. It's removed completely from your scene. And same with Mountain A. So it just removes them and adds them directly to your scene. So you've only got loaded into memory just what you need. Now, there's no textures at the moment, but I am working on a PTEX importer. So let's just deal with this mountain at the moment. Now, these mountains, uh, these files also come with lots of additional data that are associated with this data set, this element and they call them uh, instance primitives. So under here we have instance primitives and I'm just going to load in some of these for this um, mountain A. So this is uh, a couple of trees that go on the hill. Now these ones are quite heavily detailed and we'll just let that load up for a second. You see it loading down the bottom. And they are loaded in now. Now we can have a look at these. If we zoom in, we can see that there's just a whole lot of lot of detail going, a lot of polygons on these, which is why they took a while to load in. Um, they're kind of floating in the air, so my matrices are not may not entirely be correct for a couple of things. These trees are one example of that, but everything else seems to be not too bad. I believe the scene is also flipped, but um, I'll be looking at you know all the. Uh, transform coordinates later on just to make sure everything's in the right spot. So I'm just loading in some palm trees now and they're kind of stuck on the island, not too bad. And we'll load in some foliage as well. Now this system that I've written is taking heavy advantage of the new multi-instancing in R20. So this is R20 rolling, uh, running here. And as we can see here, um, there's a whole lot of data going on in there. So I'm just going to zoom in on this foliage that I just loaded in. You can see here that's the amount of foliage, you know, look at all those polygons just in this little close-up scene here, right? And I'm just going to zoom on out and keep zooming and you see, look at them all, all over the scene, right? And Cinema 4D is still running good, it's still nice and responsive and you can still navigate around this scene. There's a lot of polygons going on in there. So let's, um, let's bring in a camera now, let's switch the cameras, if I go to camera shot. Uh, also, these scenes are rendered, I believe, in um, Panavision. So let me just switch to that. And I can switch through uh, some of these um, camera angles. Now, I believe these are, again, not, not looking at the right uh, orientation. I believe this world is actually flipped. So I need to figure out my transforms later on. But anyway, this just shows that you can go through these. Now, they don't look that interesting at the moment. But let's just go to perhaps the dunes. And we'll just go down here and we'll just load some stuff in for the dunes themselves. So let's go down here, uh, dunes, let's click on this and load in some detail there, load in some detail there. Um, and if you click on these, you can see I've got a little indicator number here. This is actually megabytes, so it's 306 megabytes to load in this data. So we're just going to load in some of the smaller things. Um, 
just to put on on these dunes here. Little bits and pieces. Um, so we've got some geometry there. Again, a lot of geometry going on here. Look at it all. And uh, the way this is working is it's using the, again, the multi-instancing. So under here, um, this is a instance, and it's set the multi-instance node, and it's just got hundreds and hundreds of copies of this geometry here. So if I just click on one of those, and we'll see if we can find it. Um, let's see if we can frame the selected, frame selected object. So that's, that's that. And then if we zoom out, the number of these, if we click on that, is that's the all the instances. There's all the instances of that piece of geometry. It's just some stuff littered along the beach there. Quite a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's just keep going on this. We'll change some of the camera views again. Let's go back to that. Dunes. Beach cam. Grass roots. Um, let's just zoom out from this this view here. And we'll add a few more things down here. Let's go down the bottom. We'll add um, this thing here. Palm tree there, thing and some rocks there. I think these have some stuff on them as well, so we'll add some stuff to them. Yeah, you can see all the little bits and pieces added to the rocks there. Okay, just to show that you can turn it on and off. You know, adds it to the scene and deletes it from the scene. And let's just keep going. What have we we've got Mountain B. I'll turn Mountain B back on, and we'll do that shot that goes goes out that way. Lava rocks. Actually, let's zoom in on that area again. There were the lava rocks there I just added into the scene. Little tree has put itself right in there. Let's see if it's got stuff that you can put on instances, bonsai, little flowers, little leaves on it. Now I'm not going to load on these ones because these are 2 gigs, 2 gigs worth of OBJ. So there's a lot of data. I don't know where this one is, so let's just try and find it. Frame geometry. Now I framed all of it. Frame selected. Ah, can't see that anywhere. Come on, came in over there. So we can see what that looks like around the base of this tree here. Again, I'm not sure if these are in the right spot and at the moment, but you know, the idea is just to get this system to be able to load all this data in. So anyway, as you can see that wrapped around the tree there. So, you know, we're still responsive in here and you know there's probably I don't know. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of polygons, millions of polygons. Sorry, there's millions of polygons in this scene. All, all instance. Uh, this is running on an NVIDIA 1080 graphics card. But anyway, that's you know that's the state of this. And if you want to go through and you want to clean that thing up, you want to make it a little bit more responsive at the moment. You can you know start un unchecking some of the stuff. Turn off the mountain. Turn off some of this mountain stuff. And now we're getting back down to kind of the base scene down there. Zoom in from one of these shots. You can uh, deal with the scenes on different levels. So eventually what I'll do is I'll uh, allow this kind of stuff to be uh, put into the layers in Cinema 4D as well. So you could potentially assign each of these to layers and you could turn it on and off layers. So uh, just another level of it allowing you to uh, move things around in your scene there uh, and organize things and turn them on and off. And then uh, at the end, you know, I also have PTEX textures coming in. And the, the idea, the goal of this is to be able to load all this data around and kind of adjust your scene, adjust your lighting, 
uh, get things how you want it, and then you click an export button, and it will export it out to a, a separate Cinema 4D file, or perhaps one that works with other renderers like Redshift and Octane, and then do a full rendering in there. So this is going to be basically a system to allow you to do look dev on ginormous scenes, and um, the power of R20 and this multi-instancing really, really helps with this. Uh, it's just phenomenal the amount of detail that I can now pull in. Um, and thanks to um, An Animation Studios, uh, Disney Animation, uh, for providing this massive data set. It's just amazing to get this kind of quality stuff to um, experiment with. Okay, thanks guys, and I'll uh, post another update when uh, I have more to show. Cheers.